Hello everyone, Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It and Judd Apatow has released his new film The King of Staten Island on VOD starring Pete Davidson. I'll give you my thoughts right after the jump. Real quick, you already know the deal, but if you like and love what you're seeing, go ahead and share it with your friends, like it. Let everybody know about the place, ring that bell below, subscribe. And anytime we have something, you'll be the first to know about it. So let me be fully transparent. I am not a fan of Pete Davidson. Uh, so it had taken me some time to want to see this film. I had seen the trailers and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Um, but I, on the scale of really love Pete Davidson to hate Pete Davidson, uh, I was past hate and just didn't want to even think about him on my radar at all. So seeing this film or wanting to see this film had a very low threshold outside of the artistic people behind it. Um, but I finally gave it a look and I will say that I'm glad that I did. Uh, my likes, uh, overall this is a film that Judd Apatow typically when he makes comedies they are there is a, a heartbeat or a, a, a realistic element that is layered behind them. I think this Last film, Trainwreck, was probably the most romantic comedy or comedy on the nose comedy that he's ever done. But like Funny People or um, Knocked Up all have comedy that comes out of realistic relationships. And this, I would say, is a dark comedy because you're dealing with some pretty dark and depressing things such as depression, ADHD, uh, the loss of someone at a young age, uh, which hit me hard as being someone who lost a parent pretty early in his life. Um... Dealing with all of those in the shape of what is uh, a comedy or a film. Because there aren't really that many laugh out loud moments. A lot of the moments of laughter come out of pain or uncomfortable situations. Which is probably some of the truest forms of, of comedy or truest forms of laughter. I think you can find... If you can be smart enough to find the laughter within pain, that is, you're doing a, a fantastic job. I will say that this film did a good job of making me, my scale of not caring at all about anything that happens to Pete Davidson slide over to like, ah, oh, I actually kind of dig him now. Um, it helps you understand him a little bit more. And while this is not a complete and 100% biography, it is a semi-autobiography, if you will, semi-biography, uh, that uh, touches on a lot of things that he has had to deal with in his life. And it makes... What I have seen before just on camera and some of the antics and some of the things that he says and does um, seem a little bit more tangible and understandable and relatable. And I think that is, in addition to making a good film, that is part of the goal to, to if you can empathize uh, and sympathize on some levels to, to the, uh, the lead character and the lead actor, you've done a good job. But I feel like this... For me, this performance feels more layered and nuanced than um, the layers that, and the accolades that Adam Sandler got for Uncut Gems. I feel like this was more of a, and granted he's playing himself, so it's a little easier. He's just being who he is, but I felt like within this world, it felt more layered and nuanced. Um, I also think Marissa Tomei does a fantastic job as his mother. Um, it sort of sucks, I think she even mentioned this, it sort of sucks that she's become the mother figure to people now uh, in so many films, but I think she's doing a great job at it. Uh, and so I just hope she gets more work and I hope she doesn't get kind of stuck into this world where she can still do mothers. I think there's more things for Marissa to do besides, <laughs> besides just being somebody's mama. I think this is one of the better things that Judd's done probably since, I know a lot of some people say funny people, I like funny people because it's dark. It's a, it, these two films are both kind of where I feel like the darkness sort of sits in. This is, this is 40 deals with a familial subject as far as uh, family, but it doesn't feel as much. It's more of a comedy, especially that third act. Uh, and then Trainwreck, like I said before, is just a straight up romance, romantic comedy. So those are kind of the likes. I think this is a well intentioned well designed and it gets the the message across i don't know if it's something that I, I will just put back on over and over again because it's so dark but i do think that it's something that if you if you feel any type of way about pete i would say just go ahead and take a chance with this and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much you enjoy this film uh especially if you're coming from a place where you've had loss in your life the only thing that i really don't like 
about this flick, and this is with all Judd Apatow movies, I don't think any comedy at all, even if you're not quite a comedy, if you're a quasi-comedy, I don't think any comedy should be over the over two hours. I think hour 40, hour 50 is kind of the, the mark where you start stretching your things uh, a bit. And sort of like I said with the Spike Lee flick, um, which was much longer than this, but sort of like I said with that, there needs to be an editor. Because, and I could see some scenes, like I think there are sequences in here that have Machine Gun Kelly and they have Action Bronson. And I think both of those characters and those actors, especially Action Bronson, he's killing it in his scene, those characters are great, but giving them the long form scene instead of telling when to cut and when not to cut, it's sort of like, all right, guys, I think we can move, I think we get the point, we can move this along a little bit. And just little small snips that can be cut here and there and here and there. Um, give you the impression that yes this is a more lived in and more realistic film but as a moviegoer it makes it a little more difficult to stay with it the entire time because you feel like some things are being stretched thin sort of like a saturday night live skit where you're like oh this is funny for the first five minutes first seven minutes starting losing some of it towards the ninth minute all right we've gone a little too long can we now get out of this scene and that's what happens a little bit with some of these uh scenes in this film but that is also that's just a repetitive staple for all of Judd Apatow movies. I just don't know if he, he, he invests and believes in the people that are acting so much that sometimes he lets them go way after the cut signal should have been given. Uh, but all in all, that's the only real fault that I have in this film. Uh, I enjoyed it on my scale of give me a time stone so I never have to see this again. Uh, once is enough and play it again, Sam. For me, this is a once and enough is enough, but not because it's a bad movie. I just think the the uh, one tone and the darkness of it make it a film that's hard to just like, only oh, just pop in King of Staten Island again. Um, but I do think that had it been a little shorter and I don't want you to change it, but just been a little shorter because I don't want you to change why, what this movie is about because I think that's important. But if it had just been a little bit shorter, I think you could probably have a little bit more replay value on this. But once is enough, but I do recommend that everybody uh, who's ever dealt with anything or is on the fence or in love with Pete Davidson, you should check this out because I think you, however you feel, you're going to feel uh, either stronger about him or your opinion is going to change about uh, what you thought he was when it's all said and done. What did you guys think? If you've seen it, go ahead and leave your comments in the comments below. I'm also curious to see how did you watch it. I know people have been having some issues with the VODs coming out and your rental or purchase price is 20 bucks, and you're like, well, I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm curious to kind of see how this VOD stuff is working for you guys in the, in the absence of being able to go to theaters. Are you okay with paying $20 to rent a movie? Uh, I know a lot of people have some some comments about that. Go ahead and leave those in the comments below as well. If you want, you can hit us up on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. Or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast by the same name that is on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts, we're there. This most recent episode was all about Artemis File, which out of the three films that came out this weekend was by far the worst. But we have a pretty good discussion about why young adult novels turning into books right now may have been sort of they've already hit their mark or hit their peak and there might be different ways to go about that so go ahead and listen to that it's also you can find that in the youtube channel as well um but that's it i hope everyone is staying safe i hope everyone's being well uh and taking care of both themselves and their loved ones take care guys